Brenda. Ready? How long? I gotta like get into my own phone. There I am. Ready? Okay, here we go.
side just wanting to make stuff just wanting to write stuff and right. then almost having to deal with, with the business side of it trying to get what I make made right um, and trying to like put that up I guess yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so how do you find the balance great 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 question so Henry did everybody hear Henry's Henry's really caught between I'll just paraphrase yeah between the, the you know he's got two jobs as we all know being an art person or a person really but especially an artist you got two jobs. You got one job of making your creative stuff, right? And then you have your other job of actually getting it out there, which it almost seems like it takes a whole other person. You're all to ego, right? He gets the stuff out there. You write the stuff, and then you have somebody who gets the stuff out there. It's really, it's really difficult. It's a, I think it's a career-long exploration of how to balance those two things. And I would say, I mean, sometimes you can find sometimes of the day that are better for certain activities. Like some of us, we like to do our creative work in the morning, maybe, right? And then you do your business work in the evening, at night, or switch them around, right? Or if you have a day job, you do your creative work in between, and then your, your business work, your career, maybe after you home, like that. So it's always, it's always a balance, but I would say both are very important. Because no one will get to know your work if you just write your stuff and put it in a, in a drawer or whatever, right? No one's going to get to know your stuff. So it is a very important aspect of your artistic life. I mean, just, just make it fun. We have a saying in yoga, and I don't think there's a Sanskrit saying for this. There might be, but I don't know it. Make the pose you hate your favorite pose. There's some sense that, you know, like, shut up and just do it. But, you know, make the pose you hate. You're, if you really don't like business side of the artistic life, it's going to be great. And conversely, if you really don't like sitting down and writing or whatever every day, make that your favorite thing. You don't want to be one of those people who's, like, really good at cocktail parties. You've met them, right? They're like really like so slick, they're like oily and disgusting. And they know exactly what to say to everybody. They seem always to get the gigs. <laughs> they are not working at a, at a quality level. You don't want to be them. You also don't want to be like, oh, I discovered like a hundred years after I'm dead, because that means I'm legitimate. Like, no, I don't want to be that person. So it's a balance. It's a really good question. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Magalie. Hi. How are you? It's good to see you. Good seeing you again. I'm in a difficult place. I had a reading of one of my pieces, right. and the feedback that I got was the characters are well developed, the dialogue is engaging, 
but they, did, they didn't discern what the agency of the lead character was. They didn't feel like he, there, there was sufficient agency for the character. And uh, I'm caught between feeling um, there was agency, but, but it was a woman's version of the agency. It was more... I'm caught in the editing phase right now because I'm asking myself, how do I define agency from my viewpoint? Because the, 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 I do feel she had an objective. I do feel that it, that it fueled her journey from beginning to end. But it wasn't that she was constantly stating it. It was subtle. And I felt the subtlety suited the piece, but I have to hear what the audience says. And if the audience is full of act, uh, not act, writers, and they're saying, I don't see the agency, I'm caught in a place of tearing the whole thing apart because I'm trying to put a spine of agency and I'm losing my play. And I don't know what to do at this point. Telling me I have great dialogue and awesome characters and wonderful story and then tell me there's no agency. I'm like, but how could it be a wonderful story if you don't feel that there was agency? Right. 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 So, first of all, it's a great, it's a great question here. Does everyone know what agency is? You want to define it? Because it's not that I'm a secret agent. The mission, the mission of the character. What, the mission. what, is, take, what, is, her, what is the arc of her journey? What does she want? And how does it stay the same or alter by the end of the play? But ultimately has to alter because there is that one point of no return that makes her journey new. But there is a definite point of no return. Okay. Uh, and all those elements are in place. And, and, and the definition of agency, I don't know if it's more gender-based or because the women in the audience said, I saw it. And the men in the audience said, no, I didn't see it. And so I, I don't really feel an audience should be separated based on gender. So I am at, I'm kind of trying to meditate through this process of releasing the notes and trying to see the truth of the piece. Mm -hmm. But I'm tearing it apart. Right. Well, first thing, so you get you go you have a reading or a workshop or whatever or your editor reads your work or whatever 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 happens and you get some notes, right? It sounds like most of the notes are great and thumbs up and right on and excellent, right? The complimentary notes, the notes that say, that say is, you're doing a great job, right, are easy to take. So, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening to what you're saying. The notes that you want to agree with are hard to hear. Maybe because they're not being articulated in a way that's helpful, okay? Okay, now I'm a big believer in architecture, and I do believe, maybe I'm wrong, that architecture transcends gender, culture, class, like that. Just the architecture of a well-made thing. I, I believe it transcends that. Because we get into a tricky thing if the fill-in-the-blank folks in the audience get it and the other folks don't get it at all. Then either we say, fine, I'm only, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? It's cool. It's only written for folks, it's written for everybody, but who's ever going to get it is going to get it, right? Or we start to change it, and we don't want you to rip up your play. That's, I don't want you to do that. I just want you to be able, maybe, to meditate on it, to hear the note in a way that can be helpful to you. Okay? Because maybe there's something in what they're saying that might be helpful. There's, okay. My gut told me okay. that there was something that had to change. Okay. So telling me that is like, okay, then maybe that's the thing that is bothering me about the piece. I, I felt that there was an arc, but maybe the, the agency wasn't clear enough. Ah, there you go. There you go. That, that, and that's all. That's all. So maybe, maybe it's the agency is all there, but maybe it's at a volume that is not audible. In a series of gestures that are not visible enough to folks who aren't familiar with a character like the one you show on stage. So maybe you have to show a larger series of gestures. Okay? More it's familiar. Not, well, well no, 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 not, not more familiar. Not more familiar. Larger. If I'm... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not like I'm going to change the way I'm talking. I'm just going to make my voice a little more audible so I can be heard. And that's okay. 
And maybe you can float the belief that you might make your work better. Maybe. If you're getting notes from people, if you're in a, if you, you felt good, you know, they understood the character, they understood the story, they're into it, they're into it. They just can't quite hear it. That's all they're saying. Ah, turn up the volume, sister. I can't quite get it. I can't quite hear it. They're not like Right, they're like, yeah, 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 turn up the volume. You know, so instead of doing a gesture like this, they do that. Not a different gesture, just this larger arc. Just bigger. That's all. Just a little more audible, a little more visible. That's all. You might make it better. So you have a choice. You have a choice as you always do. Either you take the note or you don't. Right? You can leave it just like it is and maybe have a reading for another group of people who might be like, totally, thumbs up, don't change a thing, right? Okay, if you felt in your gut there was something you needed to do, then meditate on that note and see if you can frame it in a way that makes sense to you. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the ultimate thing. You want the note to make sense to you. But you feel not like you're just doing something that somebody wants you to do. Right. You're actually doing something that actually shows your play. And maybe your character is saying, it's feel more visible. Maybe. We need to raise the stakes in this scene and that scene so that it's very clear. Okay? And, that's, and that might improve your point. It might. If it doesn't, you've already got the draft before. You can go back to that yeah. one. You know, yeah, you don't want to tear it up. Don't, don't be tearing anything up. We're not there. We're not like, burn it. Don't burn it. You know, just sit with it for a while. A week or two. Put it away. Don't think about it for a while. Okay? See what comes through, it comes through. But if that's a tricky, that's a very tricky place. Maybe it'll be a little with a theme or a metaphor that you're working with in a larger work that uh, sounds cliche, even if there's some truth to it. Um, I'm writing uh, this nonfiction, uh, book-length nonfiction project, and some of the metaphors I'm working with are based in science, right. um, one of which is, um, you know, like, when we look up at the stars at night, by the time the light reaches us, they already expired. Right. Um, but that concept seems so familiar now that, like, talking about the stars and like what's alive and what's dead seems like a little bit kind of corny to me. But there's something actually true about it that is part of the larger theme of what I'm working with. Right. So I'm trying to find a way to incorporate not just that, but some other kinds of things that are making it sound sappy. Right. So you're working with writing, you're writing something that's very important work, but maybe you're concerned that some of the things sound sappy. How far are you in the writing of this work? I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know. You don't know? A thousand pages? No. Finished? A draft? 90 rough pages. Are you finished yet? No. How many, how many pages do you have to go? I don't know. It's going to be book length, so maybe it's 70. 100 more pages. I would say keep writing. You're 90 pages in, right? You're having this, I and mean, we, all of us have these concerns. Some of us get 90 pages in and we think, oh no, no, my mom is going to hate this part. I can't, I can't keep writing. I mean, different people have different concerns, right? It's not your problem. You're like, what are you talking about? Right? Okay? So, so my mom will hate it. My dad will, will, you know, disown me if I finish writing this play. Or my husband will know all about me and he'll hate whatever. Or some of my metaphors are sappy. It's your problem. See, I don't, have, I don't go there. You go there. Right? What happens is we're halfway in and we get scared. And this is what's coming up for you. I say keep going. And if at the end of 100, 200 pages, right, the worst thing about what you've written is that one of your metaphors or two of your metaphors are sappy, you can change them out for better things. It's because what you're, the point you're making, it sounds like, is deeper than the 
right? The surface looks. We have no more power. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, the point you're making is deeper, and you can easily switch it out for something more appropriate. But if you sit here now and try to figure out what that thing is, you're going to sit here staring at something that you don't need to be looking at right now. Keep writing all the way to the end, and then your more appropriate metaphors will appear if necessary. Okay? And just we have to realize that. that we were, and maybe on your next project, it's going to be something else. You'll be 90 pages in, and you'll be like, my mom hates me. Or whatever. Or this is dumb. Or this has been written before. Or I'm always going to produce my play. Or I have a hundred characters and I'm going to produce my play. Like that. Okay? Things happen. Things happen. We get, you know, like cold feet, you know? I'm terrified. And some, some shit starts going in our head. We just have to keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay? Good question, Alex. Very good. Anybody else? where I'm working on a play that um, is very, very revealing about sort of family, right. drama, and situations. And I'm in a situation where I don't know if, and I'm on like draft two of it or whatever. Right. Um, and if I finished it, I don't know if I could really morally show it to a broader audience. And my, what I'm kind of going through right now is, as it's a play where I think that kind of the core of that is the audience and the actor and whatever. If I potentially would never be able to stage it or produce it or whatever, right. um, is it worth working on a piece if it's just for me and a select group? Right. So this is exactly what I was just talking about. This is, I mean, okay. So you're two drafts into a play, right? And it's about some moral family thing. Right? Okay. And you're concerned that should you finish it and get it to a state where you can say it's finished, what if it, is it worth finishing because it's so kind of revealing about your personal story that it might not be appropriate to show to people? So here you are, halfway in, and you're like, shit, maybe I shouldn't write this at all because it's so personally revealing that I wouldn't want to produce it anyway. So it's just, you see what I'm saying? I told you. People have right? Okay. You're not worried about your metaphors being sappy. You're worried about being too revealing. The worst that can happen is that you write it and put it in a drawer. Right? You write it and you think, no, nope, no, nope, actually, I'm not going to produce this until, you know, until I'm, you know, 80. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to, and I'm going to put it in a drawer. Right? And that's, what you might want to do after you finish it. But you're in the middle now, right? So your job, again, your job, like her job, is to keep going till the end. Do the rewrites that you got to do, and don't let the concern of being too revealing keep you from writing. Because that's just some shit in your head that's trying to keep you from doing your job. Do you understand? Okay? You don't have to show it to anybody when you're done. Okay? You don't have to show it to anybody and be too revealing if you don't want to. Okay? But you do have to finish it. You get the difference? Yes. Okay, so just finish it and then you can print it out and put it in the video. It's cool. Like, like long day journey tonight. Anybody ever hear a long day journey tonight? We have them in the last 100 days. That's like, that's kind of long day journey. But, but no, but you know, the play, right? He was like, I'm writing this and don't produce it until like a hundred million years after I'm dead or whatever he said, they produced it right away after he died, boom, like that. Okay? <laughs> and we're all like, whoa, it's such a great play. Okay, so, I might turn on the windows, I don't know, but your job is to write it. Okay? If he hadn't written that, but I don't know if I can say that. I don't know. He wasn't like that, I'm sure, but, but he would never written that. frustration that I think is pretty common, which is, um, I wish I had enough time for my writing. There's you never enough. enough time for your writing. So, I'm about to get four weeks where I get to focus on nothing but my writing. 
so I feel like you know, I'm preparing like my plan, I've got my projects, I've got the details, my notes of what I'm going to do, but these opportunities don't come around all the time. So I want to make sure that I make the most of my time. Um, and my writing process has changed, like I have. So the last time I had four weeks, what worked then might not necessarily work now. So I'm just wondering, are there, besides like going in with my drafts, my notes, my organized right. things, is there anything else that I should keep in mind to make the most out of this gift? Oh, that's really good. Is everybody here? She got some time to do her writing. What a gift. That's really fantastic. And you really want to make the most of your time. And that applies to a nice chunk of time, like four weeks, or it can apply to the first hour in the morning when you get up before your kids or before your roommates or whatever. This is my writing time. You want to make sure that you are really, you know, maximizing that that precious time, right? So I, so a couple of things. What sounds like you got a great plan? Okay, and then plans are great. So you make a plan, right? You've got plans and notes and game plan. And do you have you printed out a little calendar where you can say, "This is what I'd like to do"? Or okay, well, um, it's okay. It could, you know, just give yourself a sketch, you know. By week one, I'd like to be here. By week two, I see myself being done with this. By week three, like that. Okay. Like that, you can even break it down in terms of days if you want, every day to make sure, okay? Also really important is to be compassionate with yourself. And know that whatever you get done is exactly what you're supposed to be getting done. That's the biggest one, right? Because you want to just go, yeah, right? But sometimes, you know, things happen, or maybe more, you get more done, or maybe you don't get that 100 pages, maybe you get 87 pages. You know what I mean? we got to be happy about getting 87 pages done, right? Or you wanted to get 500 pages done, maybe you get 450 done. You know? I would say, you, you, you don't get on Facebook or social media, do you? Don't either. Leave it alone. Okay? Leave it alone. Big time stuff. Okay? So just leave it alone. Especially if you're your special time. And just be compassionate. You know, go in there with the best plan and also a healthy dose of you love yourself and you're going to show up for yourself every single day. Even if it's just, you know? And prayer, if you do that. Not like, oh God, like on the roof of the Sistine Chapel. You know, but oh, great spirit that brings wonderful things. Be with me. Like the beginning of the Odyssey, you know, when we were at home. Oh, whatever you said. Yo, I'm here. Don't me. Here I go. What are the home was? You know, you can say that every day. You know? Hi, how are you? Okay, is that, is that helpful? Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Congratulations, we're going to get residency. Or a movie. I would say when you 
I close your eyes, you can do a little experiment. So just close your eyes, it's only going to So you see the first scene of your thing you're writing. What does it look like? Is it on stage or is it on screen? It's on screen. Okay, then it's a movie. Go ahead. It's a movie. It's a movie. Wait, oh, you're going to enjoy yourself. Write a movie, write a beautiful movie. If you see it on the screen, then it's a movie. If you see it on stage, then it's a play. And you can always change. If you write a draft of your movie and you want it to be played, that's it. You can just change it, right? And it's going to be going wrong. Write yourself a beautiful movie. Yeah, see? You can see it. You can see it in your mind. Just do that. Okay? Good question, though. It's a good question. Lynn, you have a question. Oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I, I did a workshop at Art Nova last week as, a, as an actor. Oh, oh right on. And, and um, uh, with a wonderful young playwright, uh -huh. you know, who, you know, rewrote every day. So, right. so it was, but I found myself more fascinated with her writing process and right. I'd get home and I couldn't write. Huh. You know, and I you know, there's something very different I find with being an actor than a writer in the right. sense of it's the same place that it comes from, but the process is different. Right, right. It's not as <coughs> emotional, I guess. It, uh, writing I mean, though it's emotional, it's right. not as caught up in the emotion. Right. It's more like putting down, right. exploring the emotion. So did you have a, a difficult time switching gears? Is that what you Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I mean, so Lynn did some work as an actor last week, last week. And then she, when she would go home, she would find it difficult to switch gears because acting and writing for you is very different. Is it different? different? Thing. I don't think I, what, what I, I think yeah. it's similar, but I don't know how to, uh, uh, get there. Yeah. Right. It's, well, sure, well, the, the thing is, is that in the acting that I'm most familiar with is, uh, actors work in community. You're not alone when you're an actor for the most part, right? You're working with others a director, designers, or other members of the company. And if it's a traditional, more traditional situation, someone else, i.e. the writer, has done the really hard work for you. Okay? And writing, you know, it's, it's you're by yourself, pretty much, right? And, you know, you're sitting there writing by yourself. And you're doing all that difficult work that for, for, for you're breaking ground and you're doing it alone. You're making something out of nothing. An actor, if they're lucky enough, can take a Shakespeare. Wow! The Shakespeare's broken that ground for them. And while an acting craft is a brilliant craft, and one that I don't practice, but I admire tremendously, I'm also aware that writing is very, very difficult. You're doing it alone. So, yeah. all the time, you have to hypnotize yourself into a place of possibility. You know, like, what's her name? That fabulous gymnast. Not Simone, but, um... Gabby Davis. Gabby Davis. Her too. I know there's so many fabulous gymnasts. But the, girl, the woman, you remember who said, like, she would say before she did that cool thing, I got this, and it became this whole social media thing. I got this. She would say, she would say it to herself, I got this. You have to... You have to encourage yourself into a place of possibility. And it, even if it's just as you're walking home from your, your workshop where you're working as an actor, I'm so happy to get home and work on my play. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to feel a whole bunch of energy. You, hit, you tell yourself that. 
right? Instead of the opposite. The notes they gave me are going to make sense to me. I'm going to know which ones are right. I know that I'm going to know which ones are right. You know, I'm going to sit with this, and the answers are going to come. We have to hypnotize ourselves into a place of possibility. But we most often do hypnotize ourselves into a place of negativity. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this. I don't know. And we have to walk around like that all the time. All the time. So often. We have to just turn it on. Okay? And it's an active. It's, you have to wake up. And it's not enough to just wake up once. You know? You have to wake up every fucking day, yo. Like, you have to wake up every day. You have to wake up every day. You won't be able to get out of bed. Exactly. We're just talking about the basics. Wake up every day, every day you have to wake up. Every day. Every time you hear that negative thing in your head, you have to turn it around. Every time you hear it coming out of your mouth, directed at somebody. People ask, what can we do when you don't feel like you have power and your shit's flying? Every person you meet, you can offer an example of righteous behavior. Every person you meet, without exception. Can we do it? Can we do that? Oh, it's hard. It's hard. And you have to wake up, you know? Constantly, constantly, constantly waking up. Right? When there's so many things in the world that are encouraging us to go to sleep. Buy, just buy something. Just take some medication. Just binge watch. You know what I'm saying? You have to constantly wake up. And that's not bad to binge watch something. Or, you know, there's so many wonderful shows on it. Genius, empire, anyway. Yeah. I have a follow-up to that. Yes. How do you encourage yourself? How do I encourage myself? Yeah. You see, this is about you, so this is what we're going to do. So I walk around saying, no, I'll just do it. I walk around saying, I got this. I brought her from, like, home girl, the gymnast. I can't remember her name. She's so fabulous. I can't remember her name. She says, I got this. That work. That'll work, right? Or, I'm so glad to be working on this one standing right here. We need to talk to you about it. Or, wow, oh gee, it's sunny outside today. What a great day. It's like, oh shit, I got so much shit to do right now. Who really does that, right? And oh, the president, and I'm fucking a mom. Who cares? Who cares? Okay, I mean, we'll do what we gotta do. We'll do what we gotta do. You know? We all care. But we don't need to, like, only focus on that. We need to focus on so many other things. So I just constantly listen to my listening to myself. And if I catch myself saying some negative, unhelpful thing thing, I just just turn it around. Before it gets too far out of control. Right? You just need to wow, I need to I need to get back on the good foot. You know, or whatever you say. Or listen to your favorite song. Or hang out with some friends who like you, who love you, and say, you can do it, man. Go around. Pretend you're a five-year-old. I don't know what your childhood was, was like. <laughs> you had nice parents, and they were like, Harrison, come on, you're wonderful. Work hard. Just keep working. You know, read some quotations from your favorite inspirational thinker or speaker, or read some Maya Angelou, or some Emerson, or some Thoreau. Or, there are all these people who, like, suffer and die. <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta lean on them now, and each other. So all of that is available to you. Think of a time when you did well, right? Was there a time when you did well in something, right? Go back to that. If you did that, you can do whatever you need to do. Tell yourself that. It's true. Why not? Why not? And it doesn't cost anything. Really. That's what's weird about it, you know? It doesn't cost you anything to be kind to people and to be like feeling like all good for you know? Or balance on your own foot. Just try it. It's fun. Millions of things. I know I have so many, I've had like thousands of things that I do just to keep myself 
my yoga teacher said one thing the other day. She said, you're not interested in perfection. Because I go to the kind of yoga where people are like, Arr! you know, they're kind of, oh, yoga, like, oh, scary ass yoga, right? <laughs> I've been doing it forever. So she said, she was seeing me try to do some yoga pose, you know. And she said, we're not interested in perfection. We're interested in stilling our minds and making it through the day. And I was like, oh, right. Fill your mind and get through the day. Right? We have one minute. See, so I have a burning question. Like, oh my God, I can... Yes! Wait! Sorry, sorry. So I'm, I'm writing the original musical. She's right there in the original musical. Right now, I'm the fourth draft. Fourth draft! And I need to take it from 2 hours and 15 minutes to 2 hours and 15 minutes. Right. So I'm trying to figure out without music, like, you know, I have fake moments. Right. And then in between, right. it's kind of like, that's kind of boring. And so, without like, with stripping things down and without like taking away from, you know, keeping it forward, how do right. strip it? How do we strip down? Right, right, right. How do you cut? How do you strip down and still like, like, because I want to explain everything. Right. Ah. Right. And I can't do that. No. No. Have you gotten notes about what you can cut? She's got to abuse those two hours and fifty minutes. Five oh, she wants it to two fifteen. Have you gotten some notes about what you can cut? Not really. Okay. Do you know? Do you know? Like in your heart of hearts, what needs to go? Do you know what needs to go? Do you have a feeling about what needs to go?